Glad you're connected with us here at WNCW. I'm Martin Anderson, and we get support from the Peace Center in Greenville, South Carolina, welcoming Brit Floyd, a Pink Floyd tribute show, August 11th. Tickets at peacecenter.org. And we get support from Sunny Creek Farm, growing Crunchy Mix, a mix of protein-rich sprouts, that can add a full protein profile to vegan diets. Sunny Creek Farm grows fresh local sprouts. Info at sunnycreekfarm.com. Eat well to feel well. I'm joined in the air studio by a friend of ours, Kenny Roby. Welcome back to Carolina. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You uh, Are you a native of, of Carolina, like Raleigh and all? Well, I grew up mostly um, in upstate South Carolina. And, oh. and then uh, with my old band before Six String Drag, uh, I moved up to Raleigh when I was like 19. And so I lived there most of my adult life. All right. Well, where's your hometown in the upstate? Um, Clemson. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Well, uh, now, yeah, you've uh, last couple of years, you moved up to Woodstock, New York, and uh, uh, launched into this wonderful solo career of the last few years. Congratulations on it. Thank that you. album uh, of yours uh, from a couple of years ago, The, the Reservoir, mm-hmm. we really enjoyed that one. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, voice sounding great. Uh, the characters you weave into your songs are just, just uh Get sucked into them. Folks, you can get sucked into these songs here of Kenny Roby. And Kenny Roby is in our area for a show tomorrow in Raleigh, at the Poor House. Yeah, in Raleigh, Poor right? House Musical. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, you head over to Knoxville on Thursday, a show at Barley's, I think, in Knoxville. Mm-hmm. And then on Saturday, you're at the Evening Muse in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And uh, those shows are for this new release, a self-titled one. Yep. Glad, glad you got some new material. You happen to have your guitar with you. I do. Maybe we can hear a song. You want to do a new one? Sure. Or what? Yeah, I'll do a song off the new, the new record. Um, this is a song that uh, that Dory Freeman, who we were talking about earlier, um, sings harmony on with me. But uh, I wish she was here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it behind, baby I'm gonna leave it behind It's just a thought that crossed my mind I'm gonna leave it behind I'm gonna leave it behind, baby I'm gonna leave it behind And once I cross that Virginia line I'm gonna leave it behind Take a breath and hold a breath and blow it in the wind Flash a shake, a tooth a grin to explain the shape I mean Moving up the mountain but I ain't find no place to stay Always been okay, even when I ain't okay I'm gonna leave it behind, baby I'm gonna leave it behind It's just a thought that crossed my mind I'm gonna leave it behind I'm gonna leave it behind, baby I'm gonna leave it behind Once I cross that Virginia line I'm gonna leave it behind Didn't leave a letter, there was nothing to explain Nothing to complain, it's just the wind and rain Some men hold and some men fold and some fall in between Some they build up steam while some just up and leave I'm going to leave it behind, baby I'm going to leave it behind It's just a thought that crossed my mind I'm going to leave it behind I'm going to leave it behind, sugar I'm going to leave it behind Once I cross that Virginia line I'm going to leave it behind Oh, once I cross that Virginia line I'm going to leave it behind That's a new one from Kenny Roby on WNCW. It's new. I guess uh, none of us have really heard it yet, and yet it sounds so familiar. I don't know if it's about the melody or what. Or what. Yeah, I don't know. That one just sort of came to me driving around outside of Woodstock one day. Just really? the melody and the, the chorus came all together um, yeah. and just uh, 
yeah, just sort of came out. As Towns used to call them, those sky songs, you know. The sky songs. Just like, oh, where'd that one come from? You just know? Dropped out of the sky. Yeah. Well, I would probably say? ripped off Towns Van Zant ripping off sky songs. So that's probably where you've heard it before. Uh huh. <laughs> Four minutes in, and we have our first confession from Kenny Rowe. Oh, yeah. Keep, keep coming. <laughs> um, uh, another thing that maybe makes it sound familiar is just, uh, I don't know, what you're singing there. The characters you uh, you evoke, it's all a lot of stuff that we can be familiar with. A mm-hmm. lot of us can can resonate with crossing over that state line, leaving it all behind. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a wonderful way, like I said earlier, of, of of creating these characters and weaving them in to your songs. And I just I love what's on your website. Uh, someone wrote it about uh, your songs. I guess it's KennyRoby dot net R O B Y. Mm-hmm. Uh, just talking about how you create these characters uh, and their they're they're damaged and they know it. They're they're broken but not bent, or broken but not fully beaten. And mm-hmm. uh, and that you, I guess you, Kenny, can kind of be the one to kind of converse with them and offer them hope, or at least a pat on the back to say you're not alone and mm-hmm. and help them persevere. It mm-hmm. seems to be a theme of a lot of your characters you create. Yeah, I think the I think that uh, I'm sort of talking to myself and I'm sort of separate from myself as well. I'm sort of. I don't know. Some people would say, uh, not in a religious way, but a higher power would be maybe your best higher self that talks to the the wounded part of you or the hurt part of you or the part that needs help. And, you know, some days that that's sort of like the best version of a higher power that I have is is the sort of good parent, the good spiritual advisor to myself. And so these characters, maybe I'm sort of talking to them or or at the same time being the conduit for their stories. It's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, we all have hardships in life that we work through, especially over the last uh, few years. There's been these external things like pandemics and whatnot. But, uh, I mean, you have really uh, gone through uh, a number of, of losses and hardships over the years, and I can't help but think that the songwriting is, is maybe kind of therapy for you, kind of like a, a journal that we some of us might have or actually seeing a therapist. Songwriting Absolutely. maybe doesn't make much money, but it might cost less than a, than yeah. a weekly therapist. Yeah. Well, it, it costs less, you know, uh, in your life than a fatality, <laughs> you know, not to be, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, it, it it does cost less. I mean, that's a that's a permanent price that we pay if we go down too many of those deep roads without any kind of help or support. Yeah, yeah. So. Which leads uh, us to um, a part of our conversation that I, I know we both wanted to get to, and we can come back around to him at some point, but, but Neil Casal— Wonderful uh, guitarist. Uh, he was doing some just great songwriting and, and such. Uh, played with Chris Robinson, a little mm-hmm. Willie Nelson, a lot of the jam band scene. Really knew mm-hmm. the great work of Neil Casal. You and he passed away uh, from suicide just a couple mm-hmm. years ago. You have been working with him for a lot of the songs that uh, ended up being on your previous album, The Reservoir. Mm-hmm. Uh, sounded like you guys were just full steam ahead for him to produce it yep. and the songs the characters in those songs resonated mm-hmm. a lot with him absolutely and then he took his life and mm-hmm. fortunately you're still able to make this album the reservoir with dave schools but um, my gosh kenny i just it's words can't describe what you must have felt when that loss happened loss upon losses yeah it was tough and, and i'd been going through some of my i had some friends who had, who had passed away um, older friends, um, but still somewhat unexpectedly uh, earlier that year and gone through some of my own hardships. I'd gone through, I was going through a divorce, uh, dealing with some of my own issues, some mental health issues, and was just, uh, was writing this stuff and was sending it to Neil, these acoustic demos, and he was really get he seemed to be getting a lot out of it and relating to all of it. And in some ways, I thought that was great. And in some ways, it was kind of scary. I was like, wow, if you're relating to some of this stuff, you, <laughs> you must be in a tough spot. And, um, and so, and, and, but he was full steam ahead. He was all into it. He was really excited about finally getting to produce one of my records after a lot of years of talking about it. And um, yeah, and I was sort of coming up for air out of, you know, sort of drowning a little bit, um, if you want to use that term, and coming up for air and feeling better. And then we were excited and talking about the record, and then all of a sudden Neil uh, took his own life, and and it sort of just sent me and so many of us into a tailspin. So um, tragedies like that, they, they can take us by surprise, right? I mean, a, Especially a, something like that. A freak you know? accident is one thing, like, well, yeah, you know, can't plan that. But uh, sometimes the warning signs of someone's mm-hmm. mental illness or, or suicide, they can just shock us those yeah. of us who knew him well like you knew neil well well and 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 the two days before it happened he was playing at lock-in festival and sitting in with everybody and looked like he was having the time of his life 
you know, and, and that happens, you know, like we hear about that a lot. And maybe, you know, with suicide, from what I understand, maybe there's, there's, there's sort of a relief when they, somebody decides that they're going to do it so they mm-hmm. can actually be free, mm. which is really strange that they, you know, some people can be, have a happiness and a lightness of being and a freedom because they're not weighted down by that. It's like, okay, the decision is made, you know, and they, then they just sort of live, which is ironic and like almost tragic. Um, that it takes that. And, you know, when I've struggled with my own mental illness and after that, I, I started to look at that and it's not to be too heavy, but it's when, when a friend of yours or somebody close to you commits suicide, you don't necessarily, you'd think it would be a warning sign is, oh, that scares me. I don't want to do that. But there's part of you, that thing in the back of your head or deep in your soul that maybe have some of those same issues almost looks at it as, oh, there's another option. Like, oh, wow. Like not inspiration, but that there's, it's, it's really interesting, the, the mentality of that, you know, and I experienced a little bit of yeah. that. Um, and, but I came to the realization one day, I went to the coast, and I got away from everything, and I took a couple of days, and I'm sitting on the beach, and I'm reading a, like a Thich Nhat Hanh book on fear, and I'm just sort of dealing with all this stuff a couple of weeks after Neil died. And, and I just came to the realization, well, maybe I could just kill off that part of me that wants to to not be here. You know, wow. maybe I could sort of let that, I guess in a Buddhist sense, like let that die or embrace that and sort of like let that die, like take out that part of me rather than all of me, you know, to realize I'm not the sum, like I'm not all that thought and I'm not all that thing that, that whatever that thing is, that dragon or monster, they call it inside the you that wants to eat you from the inside that maybe I could just get rid of that, you know, and I know that's really hard, but that was sort of a realization. And, and it wasn't like it was an epiphany that changed my whole life, but it was a start to sort of get back up on my feet and start walking again after Neil passed away. And then we had a lot of uh, healing at the Neil Casal tribute uh, concert memorial up in, in New York with a lot of Neil's friends. And so, and then making the reservoir was very cathartic. And for all of us, I mean, Dave was very close to Neil at Dave schools. He mm-hmm. was in the hardworking Americans with him. And, and Neil had been sending Dave demos, you know, of my songs that I was making. And he was so excited about producing it and getting Dave excited. So Dave really actually had heard a lot of the material from okay. Neil sending him the stuff. So he jumped in to produce it. And, and Tony Leone, who played with Neil and now plays with Little Feet, jumped in on drums. And Jeff Hill, who's been friends with Neil forever. So uh, John Lee Shannon, who who Neil was sort of grooming as this up-and-coming guitar player who played with Zephaniah Ohora. He was mm-hmm. on the record. So it was a lot of people who needed that experience of working on. I was so fortunate that it was my record that it got to happen on. But it was really more like a, a family affair and a cathartic recovery of Neil and, and stuff we were struggling with right. in our, you know, personally. And so it was, it was very, it was very healing. So very hard, you know, it's really hard. I mean, there's songs that I was doing, like there was a song called um, Room 125 yeah. that I don't even play live, um, partly because it's a lot of words and partly because <laughs> I probably break down on stage. But to where I literally like just did it live, I did one take and I couldn't do it anymore. And Dave and all were like, we just can't do it anymore. I'm not going to be able to make it through that song because when I sent that to Neil, I wrote that like three weeks before he died and he just said expletive it's my life Mm. and I was like wow you know and speaking of looking back on that with you know as we look back on it somebody commits suicide what could we have done you know with the car accident you know maybe we could have taken the keys but Mm. you know but with that situation we couldn't have taken the keys proverbially proverbially from Neil and so you know he he really related to it. And, and we look back and go, gosh, what could we have done? You know, so many people were either upset or mad or just so shaken up and then looking at what more we could have done. And the answer is probably nothing, you know, um, uh, that's a, it's just like any kind of recovery. It's up to that person to, you know, um, to be able to work on that. And even then there's no guarantee, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, you can, you got to help yourself. You got to want it, you know. And I think he did, but sometimes that that beast is just too heavy. 
We're talking with Kenny Roby uh, this morning on WNCW and some just wonderful insights uh, about the late Neil Casal and uh, the making of your previous album, The Reservoir. And a lot of those artists that you mentioned are also on this uh, new release that mm-hmm. is out uh, this week. Uh, uh, so congratulations on that. I'm so thank you. And I'm sure that a lot of these uh, these songs are, are reflecting a lot of what we're talking about. Um, why don't we hear another song? You want to do something, mm-hmm. another new one or something from The Reservoir? Well, I'll do something off The Reservoir. Okay. I wish I could drink just a little I wish I could drink just a little But a little is more than I'm down at the store Knocking on your door for some cocaine I wish I could take a little taste, babe To put me in just the right place, babe Well, a little bit of taste puts a look on my face I'm on the train that leads me to cocaine Too much, then I'm cussing your touch. And ain't that a little like cocaine? Gonna make my whole life a new mess now. Dancing with the lady in a white dress now. Then I'm stuck on a rail with a shovel and a pail. And on the working train into St. James. Too much, and I'm cussing your touch. And ain't that a little like cocaine? Let me go, let me go, now damn it. Let me go to the banks of the sea. Let me jump in the waters, didn't swim any hotter. Dirty water, Jimmy's daughter, and cocaine. Dirty water, Jimmy's daughter, and cocaine. Dirty water, Jimmy's daughter, and cocaine. That's Kenny Roby uh, live on WNCW and a tune from his now previous album as of this week. It's <laughs> your previous album, The Reservoir. Uh, the album that you you didn't really get to do, uh, I guess, the, the planned tour and big mm-hmm. release out of. Uh, for those that uh, that don't know, a musician or a band or whatever, uh, they... they Put, they record an album that takes a lot of work, and then comes the release and fanfare and all that to generate support. And a live tour is a big part of that, just just to you know pay the bills and make ends meet. And it also feels really good, I'm sure, when these songs that you've crafted get heard by folks and folks mm-hmm. can resonate with them. Did you really did you really feel kind of like a, a tragic loss with this pandemic of the reservoir not really getting its showcase? Um, yeah, it, it was definitely a bump in the road. Um, but there were, you know, I live in, I, I live in, in Woodstock, New York, like you said, and that's like an hour and a half from the city. And I got to say, it's, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit tough to feel too sorry for yourself um, sometimes when you know what's going on in the city during the pandemic and how bad it was. I don't think a lot of people really understand like how overrun the hospitals were and how many people were dying. And they couldn't even find a place to put those people that have died, you know, and, and we forget that, I think, um, or, or a lot of people just don't know that. And, and it's when it's that close to you and, you know, a lot of people who have left the city who are in, you know, the Woodstock or upstate New York or the Hudson Valley area. And, you know, maybe you don't know a lot of people who died from COVID, but like they do, and they were just there and they have a lot of people that are friends that, you know, and I'm, I'm 50. And so. I'm starting to know people who, you know, I've always been the youngest guy in the room and now I'm the youngest guy and the, <laughs> the other people are in their 60s, uh-huh. you know. And so people who are, have health uh, issues, you know, and who have uh, uh, previous issues that COVID 
absolutely affects. But anyway, that's a long answer to say mm-hmm. that I tried to keep a healthy perspective on it. You okay. know, it yeah. was, it, it, I, I, I was bummed out, but it could have been a lot worse. And people still were able to hear the record and receive it and hear it at a time that I think maybe, um, at least from what they tell me, they needed to hear it because we were all isolated. And that's what the reservoir is about is working through isolation. And so it it just happened to be, you know, uh, fit the theme of the day of, of trying to people working through and sitting with themselves and reflecting and looking at their lives and what to leave and what they, what to keep and what's important. And as we saw that with people leaving jobs or not going back to jobs. And, you know, the one good thing is I was able to get out, around the reservoir, which is near my house more and up into the mountains and explore. I I was grateful that I could be outside because people in the cities can't really be outside. Good observation. I could go and be myself or meet people and go for walks and go hiking and, and explore the area, which I wouldn't have done if I would have been touring. So, you know, there's two sides. And Woodstock, small enough town that the outdoors is still kind of a focal point of, of the experience there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, another focal point of Woodstock is the music history, and you talk about being um, maybe one of the older ones in the, in the crowd nowadays, now that you've hit 50 and all, but uh, obviously there are all sorts of, all the generations uh, in Woodstock, from young to old, but mm-hmm. uh, I can't help but think that, oh, well, you must be running with some of these old legends that, that are mm-hmm. a good bit older than you, like yeah. Garth Hudson. His birthday is yeah. today. Garth yeah. from the band. He still lives around there because yep. he's the only one uh, remaining. Yeah. Uh, but um, who else? John Sebastian uh, from Love and Spoonful and all, mm-hmm. and, and he's on this new record. So yeah. you are um, you're able to interact with some of these folks, and, mm-hmm. and is it, it's a young, thriving seen in Woodstock as well of younger folks? Yeah, there's some, you know, a little outside of Woodstock. Uh, there's more, more of that. Woodstock's kind of a, it's kind of an older town. You know, I'm still the youngest one in the room there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's, there's still a lot of folks from back in the day, you know, John and, um, and Gar still lives there and just a lot of other people like, you know, Jeff Mulder and, 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 and that whole crew. Hmm. Um, and some of the people that we don't necessarily know, um, from the quote unquote the Woodstock Festival, like which is like an hour and a half from Woodstock itself, yeah. um, but more of that people who were you know you talked to John and he was friends with you know obviously played with Fred Neal you know Tim telling me Tim Harden stories you know there's that side of Woodstock that was more just the arts side of Woodstock and it's always been an artistic community since the 1800s it's a, and it's always been that it's sort of like some of the small towns here it's that. This, this strange bedfellow is a very conservative town run by conservative folks with very, you know, liberal people moving in and hmm. spreading throughout the town. And it's it's this balance of, of people living together and working together, which is pretty interesting. You yeah. Know, it's a lot like North Carolina. I, I know it had a real uh, bohemian, uh, literally bohemian mm-hmm. uh, yes. history well before the, oh, well, the well before festival that. thing. Yeah, with the Maverick um, community yeah. and, and Birdcliff and, you know, which were – where Dylan and some of those people moved later, you know, before the Woodstock festival happened, like in the earlier in the sixties. Um, but yeah, since, and, and then the, you know, the, 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 the Hudson painting movements and things like that. So it's been it, absolutely, it's, it's an artistic area. You know? We're talking with Kenny Roby here on WNCW and, uh, uh, well, you mentioned, we've mentioned a couple of the folks that are on this new one, John Sebastian, Dory mm-hmm. Freeman, who's actually from down, around here mm-hmm. here From in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Schools produced your last album. Uh, Steve Earle produced uh, and, and worked a lot with you and Ray Kennedy on mm-hmm. from back in the days of Six String Drag and all. Mm-hmm. Um, you produced this one? Co-produced it? What yeah, happened? basically, like me. and I, I mean, there's so many good musicians on it. Um, like you said, Jeff and, and Tony, who were on the Reservoir, played were in the rhythm section, and Dan Littleton. Um, plays with Amy Helm and um, used to play with Michael Hurley all the time, who's one of my musical heroes. And um, Dan's played with everybody. So, you know, and it's great engineer who's got a lot of, uh, Chris Bittner, who's got a, a lot of great musical taste. So it's, we, I just kind of trust those guys. And, right on. And, 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 you know, and then Amy Helm came in and sang on a couple songs with me. And, you know, her vocal guidance is always great. And, um, and she was on the Neil Cassell tribute 
um, album with mm. me as well. All right. So. Well, I can't wait to, for us to get to know it here at WNCW, this new self-titled release from Kenny Roby. Sometimes a self-titled album indicates when when it's not your first record, mm-hmm. uh, it indicates like you're just turned over a new relief or mm-hmm. rebirth starting over. Does it feels like that with this one for yeah. you? Or? I think I think so. I think a reservoir was sort of like a recovery record, like working through it. Okay. And and the new record seems to be sort of on the other side of that. You All know, right. it's, I feel like they kind of go well together. Yeah. The book ends there. Well, maybe we can hear one more from okay. you and, and another a new one. Kenny Roby okay. here on WNCW. All right. This one's a new day. It's the the first track on the record. This is the one that Amy sings with me, and uh, and John Sebastian plays harmonica on a little part at the end. I don't know where I'm going. But I know where I've been I think my poor hearts are growing It will bloom again Cause today Is a new day There can be no other day Lord you move it, yes you do. If I take it easy on the water and don't burn in the sun, it'll rise slow and steady like it ought to. What's begun has begun. Cause today is a new day There can be no other day You move, babe Yes, you do Ain't gonna feel bad about my healing Let it roll if it rolls I remember swinging from the ceiling In my prisoner's clothes Some fly by me, some stay behind me well, I am where I am If you want to know where you can find me Baby, whip out your calendar And look up today Cause today is a new day There can be no other day Love you move me, yes you do. Wonderful, wonderful, nice new one from Kenny Roby here on WNCW, uh, live uh, version of what's that song called? New Day. New Day. All mm-hmm. right. And we look forward to hearing it on the new release, a self-titled one from Kenny Roby. His website is kennyroby.net. He is playing in Raleigh tomorrow, the poorhouse. He comes uh, through our area and plays in Knoxville on Thursday and then in Charlotte on Saturday at the Evening Muse. And mm-hmm. then I guess... Uh, Friday in Winston-Salem. And Friday in Winston-Salem. Mm-hmm. At the Ramcat. All right. Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you. A little outside our area, but uh, mm-hmm. we got a lot of online listeners. So yeah. thank you for reminding me of that one. Friday Friday, Winston Salem at the Ramcat, kind of the official uh, debut of this mm-hmm. new release, yeah, I guess. Um, but all the best to you, Kenny, during Thank these you. crazy times of uh, releasing albums and going on mm-hmm. tours, but they both get kind of stunted and all. But you're doing your live streams when you're not on tour, like mm-hmm. this. 
uh, back, getting back on the road. So uh, best of luck to you, and thanks for all these great songs and just putting out there all these, these wonderful insights that you, you've shared with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, let's uh, transition actually to uh, that tribute to uh, Neil Casal uh, of all these great songs of his. And maybe you can talk about uh, this. Uh, it's, it's called Highway Butterfly. You mm-hmm. took part in it. And I don't know, I've, I've queued up a couple. Maybe we can, you choose which one, that, that title track from Steve Earle or uh, Zephaniah or Ahura, whom you mentioned. Yeah, the I Zephaniah that, track. I, lo- I love it. Isn't it's that a fabulous. And it, it's a little bit different than Neil's version, but it's really, really good. And the, the Jamie Wyatt is uh, really nice. The Billy String song is great. <laughs> yeah. There's there's so many good songs on it. Um, the the uh, the Eric D. Johnson track from... Um, from, um, uh, is- from uh, but, no, well, his called message. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But um, but the Eric Johnson uh, track from um, Bonnie Light Horseman, oh. um, he's fabulous, and uh, I really like that band. And his track is great. Um, the Tedeschi Trucks uh, yes. track is beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's in Bob Weir's on it. Phil Lesh. There's so many, so many folks on it. And a lot of the songs um, really are different than Neil's originals. Mm-hmm. From and, and actually, we'll, we'll hear a Neil. We'll hear Neil Neil himself with a song mm-hmm. after this one from. I guess we'll do the Zephaniah or Horror one. But mm-hmm. uh, Highway Butterfly was a fundraiser. You want to talk a yeah. bit about that? It's for the Neil Casal Music Foundation. So in the wake of Neil's death, um, some f- old friends of his and business um, manager um, and Dave Schools, Jim Scott, they decided that they wanted to do a tribute record. Um, but also form a foundation to raise um, money to buy instruments for school programs and children in New, New York, New York, and New Jersey, because you know music was one of those things that sort of saved Neil's butt uh, mm-hmm. when he was struggling. A lot of times, it was his sort of, it was his refuge and and his relief. And so, you know, if we can try to help promote that and help kids who are struggling have an outlet. Um, to, to work on that, to, to learn solitude and not isolation, you know, to work on themselves and, and learn these skills, which, of course, now we know it's so great for the mm-hmm. mind and for the heart and, um, and the spirit. But uh, so the other part of the foundation, the other mission um, is to raise money to donate to organizations like Music Cares and Backline and other mental health organizations that are there to help uh, artists and music business professionals especially ones on the road that struggle being out there alone, isolation, living a tough life. And whether it's with um, mental health issues or drug addiction or, you know, just health issues in general um, to support, to support that. So two causes that would have been important to Neil is what the foundation is about. And if you want to learn more about it and, or donate to the foundation um, it is a charitable organization. And um, the website is, Neil Casal Music Foundation dot org, and if you just search it on Google, you can find it as well. Yeah, so. Casal C A S A L. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenny Roby, thanks again. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, from that collection, Highway Butterfly, Zephaniah Ahura, WNCW. right down to love I always run for the hills hoping maybe the next time I just might find the will to stay here beside her but I know I never will so give my best to bond Send her my love when I'm gone Give my best to buy 
morning By the time she wakes up I'll be gone So far gone Crooked streams and fireflies Lady so fair Though it seems I've tried and tried I still ain't getting no Just what it will May leave me with nothing But lonely hours to fill I'd sure love to see her But I know I never will So give my best to Bonnie And send her my love So 